Hi, Hugo Reed. I have a couple holiday books for you this week. First, we're gonna read Hanukkah with Maisel. Hanukkah is still going on this week, so we have one more Hanukkah book. This one's kind of fun. It's by Joel Edward Stein, and it's illustrated by Elisa Fiore. Who do you think this story is about? I see two characters. One's a person, one's an animal. I see a cat and a man. Do you think this took place sort of a long time ago, or do you think it's current? I'm thinking because of the things I see back here and kind of the way he's dressed, although this could be modern, but I'm thinking it's a long time ago. Let's read and see what happens. Misha was a very good artist, but a very poor man. He lived by himself in a tiny cottage outside the village of Grodno. Very few people in Grodno had enough money to buy his paintings, so Misha made do with very little. He lived on the few potatoes he grew in his yard and the milk he got from his cow, Clara. One night, when the winds howled and the snow blew around the windows, a little cat wandered into Misha's barn. She made her way to the stall where Clara was sleeping and curled up beside the old cow for warmth. Clara didn't mind having a visitor and she gave her approval with a low moo. In the morning when Misha came to milk Clara, he saw the cat huddled in the corner of the stall so weak she could hardly walk. My, my, what have we here? Misha said to the cat. Where did you come from? The cat looked up at him with her emerald green eyes. She seemed to sense that Misha was a kind man. You're so thin, Misha said with a soothing voice. Poor old Clara doesn't have much milk to give but we can share. Misha took the cat back to his cottage and gave her a dish of milk. She weakly lapped it up and purred gratefully. It's a good thing you wandered in here, Misha said. I don't think you would have survived the cold night outside. We get to see his cabin a little bit more. The cat curled up on the blanket that Misha set down near the fireplace. Now get some rest and you'll feel better soon, said Misha to the cat. I think I'll call you Maisel. You're certainly a very lucky cat to have wandered out of the cold and into my barn. He's making her comfy. Mm, here's a clue about how long ago it was. That tells us it was probably a long time ago, don't you think? Because we don't usually put kettles over in the fireplace anymore. The afternoon, Misha brought Maisel another dish of milk. My cupboard is almost empty, said Misha, but tonight is the first night of Hanukkah and I'm making latkes. We will celebrate together. He went to his pantry where he found two potatoes and enough oil to fry the latkes. I'll grate the potatoes the way my grandmother taught me, Misha told Maisel. And we'll add a little oil to the pan, a little salt, and a little pepper. And we'll have our Hanukkah latkes. I think he's probably happy to have some company too. What do you think? And tonight we must light the first Hanukkah candle. On the mantel over the fireplace stood a beautiful silver menorah with figures of two bold lions, lions holding the Ten Commandments. Look, he's showing it to Misha. There's the menorah. That is a fancy menorah, isn't it? Look now, the, see how the picture got 
it's not in color so much now. It's more of a, what we call sepia, um, sort of like black and white. So I think he's remembering in this part. I think this, let's see what it says. My grandfather made this wonderful menorah, Misha said to Maisel. I have no money for candles, so I don't know how we'll light them, but Hanukkah is a time for hope. So look, I think that's his grandfather. Who do you think this is? I think it's Misha, when he was a little boy. Suddenly, Misha had an idea. I may not have candles, he said to Maisel, but I am an artist, and an artist has paint. Ooh, he has an idea. Misha took a fresh canvas and stood it on his easel. He daubed his brush in the paint and made a bold stroke on the canvas. As Maisel watched, Misha painted a beautiful large menorah just like the one that stood on the mantle. Then he painted all the candles, including the shamash. Now we're ready for Hanukkah. So he's painting this exact same menorah that they showed us in the other picture. Here are the candles. I think we'll see it better on one of the next pages. At sundown, when it was time to light the first Hanukkah candle, Misha sang the blessing as he painted one flame on the shamash and another flame on the first candle. That was pretty creative, wasn't it? He didn't have candles, so he painted them and he's gonna light them in the picture. It looks like Maisel's watching. Then he sat down to eat his latkes. He put one latke into Maisel's dish. Maisel gave a meow of approval and licked her whiskers. Ooh, she's thinking this looks yummy. The next afternoon, there was a knock at the door. Oops, did I miss? I think I missed a page. I sure did. The next night, when Misha went to the easel to draw the next candle flame, he saw how little paint he had left. We will have to make these paints last as long as we can, Maisel. On the fourth night of Hanukkah, Misha had run out of yellow paint. So he made do with a little blue, a little orange, and a little red. On the eighth night, Misha sang the blessing and used the last drop of paint to paint the final flame. There's all his candles. See how they're kind of changing to darker colors because he's using the paints he has. The next afternoon, there was a knock at the door. Through the window, Misha could see the horse and wagon of a peddler. He opened the door to greet a small man with a big smile. A peddler is uh, like a salesman. They didn't have as many stores a long time ago. So people would have things in their wagon. It was sort of like uh, if you had a store in your car because they didn't have cars, they had wagons, right? So they would put things they could sell in their wagon and then they would go around to different people's homes and sell them to them. So the store kind of came to you. Shalom, shalom, the man said cheerfully. I'm Meyer the merchant, and I sell many things. Perhaps I have something, <coughs> excuse me, you would like to buy. I'd love to see what you have, said Misha, but I have no money to buy your goods. Well, perhaps you have something you can trade then, suggested Meyer, peeking around the door. Misha smiled. I am an artist, and an artist has paintings. So that was the other thing that was a little different a long time ago. Sometimes people didn't use money all the time. They would trade things. So if you had chickens and had eggs, you might trade eggs to get flour or to get a bucket or to get the things you needed. You would just trade. They heard a loud... Oh, that one stuck too. There we go. He led Meyer inside and showed him his paintings. Meyer looked at the scenes from Misha's childhood and paintings of Jewish holidays and weddings. A portrait of a little cat caught his eye. 
These are wonderful, said Meyer. Look at all his paintings. You see the one as a cat. And you see pictures of his childhood. Wow, he has a lot of paintings, doesn't he? They heard a loud meow as the cat scampered toward them, purring loudly. Goldie, is it really you? exclaimed Meyer, scooping Maisel into his arms. Here we can see that picture of the menorah, even probably the best one we've seen yet. So there's the man Meyer and the cat's going right up to him. Did you notice he called her Goldie? Hmm, let's see what that's about. Goldie, Misha looked from Maisel to Meyer. Yes, I've had her since she was a tiny kitten, said Meyer. A few nights ago while I was asleep, she must have jumped out of the wagon. I've been looking for her. He's remembering having her in his wagon. So that means Maisel is Goldie, cried Misha. Meyer looked confused. Goldie? I found her in my barn one morning, Misha explained. She was very weak, so I took her in and cared for her. She was lucky to find my barn, and I was lucky to find her. There's two people that love the cat, aren't there? Now I see why you named her Maisel, said Meyer. She certainly was lucky. Misha tried to smile. Me Maisel had become his good friend, but now he realized she would have to go back with her owner. Hmm. It's kind of sad for him, isn't it? Meyer turned to the paintings. You have quite a collection here, he said. I especially like the wonderful menorah painting on the easel. I know many people who would be interested in buying paintings like these. Would you be interested in selling them to me? Of course, said Misha. He helped Meyer load the paintings into the wagon. So he got some business, didn't he? He said, it said at the beginning there weren't many people in his small town to buy his paintings. So they found someone going to take him in his wagon, take him to the next places that he stops. You know, said Meyer, I'm on the road a lot, and I wonder if you'd do me a small favor. Could you take care of Goldie, I mean Maisel, for me? Oh, look how excited he looks. A broad smile appeared on Misha's face. That is not a favor, he said. That is a gift. He we Maisel weeped back and forth between Misha's and Meyer's legs, purring happily. She has two people that love her. So he's saying, it would be my pleasure to take care of her. That wouldn't be a favor, right? That would be a gift that I get to keep her for a while. Meyer climbed on his wagon. He waved to Misha and Maisel as he drove slowly away. I'll be back, he shouted. Happy Hanukkah to both of you. There he goes. So he ended up, Misha ended up getting two new friends, didn't he? Meyer is going to come back and see him. And Maisel is staying with him. Fun story. If you celebrate Hanukkah, I hope you're having a great week. I'll talk to you later. Bye.